How many of you in this room tonight would be honest enough to say, man, Luis, I am tired? How many of you would be honest enough to raise your hand and say, I am tired? As I look around this auditorium, I notice not everybody was able to raise your hand. I'm not sure if you guys are lying or maybe you guys are really tired and you're, you're so tired that you can't raise your hand. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that you know, you're not tired. But I think, and I can assume, that everybody in this room has gotten into a place or has, rem has been reminded of a time when you were physically or mentally tired. You know, whether that was from school or work or all the different responsibilities that we have at home. You know, till this day, I still have the utmost respect to all the students who are taking summer classes because that is mentally draining. If, if you've never taken a summer class, man, it is very mentally uh, draining. And for those who are just working full time, may, you gotta wake up early. Maybe for you guys, you guys have to drive or commute. And by the time you're already at work, you're already tired. Maybe you didn't get a good night's sleep. Or, and by the time you get at work, it depends on your job, if your job is requiring physical labor, or maybe you're just sitting uh, behind a desk, staring at a screen, nine to five. Uh, that can be both mentally and physically tiring. Or, you know, for those with little kids and uh, babies around, you know, your work just started once you get home. You know, you gotta prepare dinner, uh, maybe do a few chores, or uh, do the dishes, or maybe even do some laundry, or run some errands. You know, as busy as our as busy as our schedules can get, sometimes we tend to overlook and forget to ask ourselves, how are we doing spiritually when we serve God? This evening, I just want to ask you guys three questions that I think might help you uh, to see if you're serving God the way he wants you to. And this evening, I just want to jump right into our uh, outline. I want to ask you guys the first question this evening. First question is, are you mocking God this evening? We see it here very clearly in verse number seven. Verse number seven, it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. You know, God cannot be mocked. God knows our hearts better than we do. I think of a verse back in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 16, seven, that latter part of the verse where it says, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And we know that God knows our hearts more than we do. You're, you're probably thinking, well, how do we mock God? Well. One of the ways that I believe we mock God, and we don't even know it sometimes, is if we come to church unprepared. You know, if you're serving in any type of ministry, and as I look around this auditorium, I'm so thankful for uh, every individual here serving in a ministry, whether that be AV or a live stream or, you know, a ministry that involves people. And if you're in a ministry that, you know, specifically involves people, and you come unprepared, you know, that's mocking God right in his face. You're saying to God, God, I've taught a lesson before. I've emceed before. I've, I've song led before. I can sing the songs backwards if I wanted to. You know, I've got, God, I've done this several times, and I don't, I don't think I need to prepare that much because I have all this experience. I have all this uh, um, the experience and talents that you've given me. And if you're thinking that your experience or the talents that uh, you have will help you, then, then you're mistaken. Yes, you know, you might be able to MC pretty well, you know, you might be able to song lead, and you might as well be able to sing the songs backwards, but, and you might be able to uh, teach the lesson uh, very clearly to your audience, to the kids or to the adults. But if at that point, you know, you're not serving God the way that he wants you to, you're serving God out of the flesh, you're mocking God because you're not taking the opportunity that he's given you to serve him seriously when there's other people that would love to be in your position serving God. Second question I want to ask is, what are you sowing? You know, I'm very thankful for all the sponsors and the teachers we have, but the only reason why you're serving this evening is because you want to impress the people around you, then you got it all wrong, you got it all mistaken. If you're serving God out of the flesh, the Bible states it very clearly in verse number eight. It says it's going to reap corruption if we serve in the flesh. The Bible tells us a few chapters before uh, in Galatians chapter one, verse 10, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Ephesians chapter six, the book next uh, after Galatians, says in Ephesians chapter six, verse six, it says, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of God from the heart. You know, again, I'm very thankful for all the teachers and sponsors that uh, I've 
been able to meet uh, and just be under uh, during my time here in Heritage. And, you know, I'm so thankful for everything they've done in our lives, in my life specifically. But if, you're only, but if you're only serving because they asked you to and because you don't want to disrespect them by saying no or turning them down, then you're, you know, technically, yes, you're serving, but you're not really serving the spirit. You're serving uh, to please your teachers. You're serving to please your sponsors instead. You know, I'm reminded of an idiom that I learned in school, and I'm pretty sure many of you guys know it. And as of right now, I've been, I've been living by this idiom. It's, you are what you eat. And now if you eat a lot of junk food this evening, um, you got a problem. Um, you got, <laughs> you're eating a lot of junk food, a lot of unhealthy stuff. I would say nine times out of the 10, you know, you're not going to feel very well. Um, but if you eat a lot of greens, uh, a lot of salad, uh, the right fruits, uh, some purple carrots, uh, I feel like, you know, you feel a lot better and a lot, a lot more energetic. Well, it's the same idea with verse 8. We see, you reap what you sow. And if you're sowing out of the flesh this evening, we see it very clearly in verse 8. Whatever comes out of it is corrupt. You know, God can't use that. But if you sow out of the Spirit, it says, the Bible says it's life everlasting. Last question I want to ask you this evening is, are you giving it, are you giving it your all to God? I believe this is the most important uh, part of my outline. Are you giving it your all to God this evening? The Bible teaches us in verse number 9. I want us to go there and look at it once again. Verse number 9, it says, And let us not be wary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we look into this very busy summer schedule, I know um, with our men's barbecue and then with all the camp activities that we have at the church for the kids and uh, for the college and maybe even for the youth, you know, what a great opportunity uh, to bring someone we know to church who's maybe never heard the gospel because I know every individual in this room knows uh, an individual who needs to hear the gospel. If you knew today that this would be the last summer that we had before the Lord came, I wonder how many of us would do all that we can to bring everyone we know who's unsaved to hear the gospel. I wonder, you know, this evening, many of you guys are serving in a ministry, and I'm, again, I'm thankful for that, but I wonder what comes to your mind when you get the notification on your phone saying, you're serving soon. I wonder if your reaction is, oh man, I gotta prepare another lesson for these kids. Or maybe if you're serving in the adults, I gotta prepare another lesson for these adults. If you're serving in a ministry that requires you know, a lot of preparation or a lot of practice, I think of the live stream and the AV and uh, choir and orchestra, and you know that you have to uh, come to church a little bit early, is, is your reaction, ah, oh, I gotta show up to practice, I gotta come up, I gotta come to church earlier, I gotta wake up earlier on a Sunday, on a Saturday to go soul winning? I wonder this evening, has serving God become more like a chore to you instead of a cheerful attitude? Has serving God, the God of all grace and comfort, become more like a hassle instead of an honor? Has serving God, the God that saved you and me this evening, become more like a pain instead of a privilege? Turn with me to Proverbs 27.1, and I'll close with this. I know many of you guys know this verse, and uh, I'm sure that uh, you've heard this verse countless of times, but I want you guys to see it for yourselves. And as a matter of fact, I want us, I want us all to read it once we get there. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number 1. It says, Proverbs 27, verse 1, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You know, there's going to be a day where the track that you leave on a person's door will be your last track that you ever pass out. You know, there's going to be a day where the last lesson you prepare will, will be the last lesson you, you'll be able to teach. You know, I think this evening, when you're serving God, there's no such thing as a small task or a small service. Right. Whether you're serving, whether you're serving uh, in the culinary ministry or maybe you're asked to clean the restrooms, take out the trash. You know, in God's eyes, that's, that's very important in his eyes. You're cleaning the church, cleaning his house. You know, we ought to treat every opportunity that we have for God, that we have to treat every opportunity we have to serve him and treat it as if it was our last, because one day it will be. Let's pray.